the social media world like, oh, you suck, or get back to the drawing board, you fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> He's always been my favorite fighter, even before I knew him. Damn, man. Why would you say this? <laughs> We're all going to jail in Bangkok somewhere. <laughs> it was just so bad and, like, so negative. <laughs> deeds? Like, I don't really feel like I do really, like, many good deeds. And... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rock Revolving Mighty Boy. It is... It's good night, freak and Irene! Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Time! And those had enough people to fire truck out! Yeah. So, you know, you're you're in a happy place now. I mean, I I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, I saw it from when you left Petendi to before your fight to seeing you a couple of weeks ago. Like, you can see what Thailand does to somebody, and it did it for me. Other than my impending trip back next week, <laughs> but I mean, you can you can see what it does. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can see what it does to somebody because you're always looking to come back. When you know that trip coming back is close, you're like getting all hyped up. You're in a better mood when you're here. It's such an amazing place. But, yeah, I, uh, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, yeah. I just, I just feel happy with my life choices on a daily, like on a daily basis when I'm here. You know? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, life choices being like training for one. Like, it's crazy. Like, the, just yesterday. I was at, like, I stay at Petch and D, and so, like, I came downstairs, and, like, I had a really long day, so I, like, overslept, and I missed training, and, like, even the reception lady was, like, you weren't at training today. I was, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, training every day is essential. Like, even if you're just a foreign UFC fighter, like, the receptionist at the front's, like, hey, why did you train today? Like, aren't you a fighter? You should be training. I'm, like, ah, oh, you're right. I should be training. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I fell asleep. You know, like, it's it's just... So, yeah, so making those choices every day, like where like I'm held accountable for training, and it's just like okay, now after training's over, like I'm just gonna go walk around the city and like look at the markets and temples, like yeah, yeah, it's it's I don't know, man, I just I'm just in a better place. Uh, what do you think? I have, I have a few questions that I just think are like I don't know that I've ever heard somebody ask you, but like, what is the biggest misconception about Khalil? Oh God! Uh, <laughs> I think that the biggest misconception is that like I'm this like overly nice, like amazing guy. <laughs> Wait a minute, then you've got me fooled, buddy. <laughs> There's no, a problem. Really, no, really, really though, because like I mean, like, and maybe it's not, but it's just like personally, like I feel like I'm just a fucking asshole. Like, compared to most people that I, like, that I look up to and the qualities that I admire in people, I'm like, damn, like, I wish I had that. Like, if I had that, I'd be a great person. But, like, to be honest, like, this is 100% honesty. Like, I feel like I'm very just, like, selfish and self-centered. And, like, there's a lot of things that, like, I really don't care about or that I can't really, like, like feel or empathize with. And I wish that I could. And so, like, people see a certain side of me, and they're like, oh, like, he's such a good guy and all this stuff. But really, man, like, I'm kind of, like, I'm trapped in my own world. And I think that the biggest the biggest thing that, I guess, makes people feel like I'm this great guy is that, like, I just – I really just treat people, like, how I would want to be treated. You get me? Yeah. And, like, I just – I really just never aim to, like, really personally do harm to anybody or, like – fuck anybody over or do anything wrong but as far as just like like deeds like i don't really feel like i do really like many good deeds and so like i'm really blessed to have so many people just like support me and reach out to me and things like that but other than that like man i don't 
I'm not really like as outward focused as I'd like to be, which I feel like in order to be a great person, like you got to be outward focused. So I'd say that that'd be my, that'd be my answer. <laughs> and then with that, I mean, what are you, what are you seeing other people doing that you think that you don't do? Cause I've been with, I've seen you not, you know, from you, your, your point of view, I've been out with you with many a times that we've had people come up, Oh, Khalil, can I get a picture? You know, things like that. What are you seeing? Are you saying on like a bigger scale? Like you need to, you, you feel like you should be contributing to something bigger than you? Or what is it that you see people that you look up to that are, they're doing that you think, you know, is admirable, admirable? Um, I'd say just like, like a lot of just like empathy and quality time and just like attention, right? Like, and just like really like being active in in certain areas like i'm not like i'm not involved in any type of like outreaches i'm not you know like i'm i'm not really doing anything for people physically in my opinion so maybe like yeah maybe like i'm living my life in like and pursuing my dream right now and people are inspired like cool but that's not really me putting any effort into you know what i mean into people yeah but the thing is is what you're doing is 100 percent genuine in you so maybe you're seeing it as you're not trying to do these things and people they don't need you to try that's what's you know and i'm not we're we're friends and i'm not trying to like blow you up or anything but that's what's special about khalil is I know you. You could talk shit to me, you know, whatever. We could hang out. You could not talk at all. It's no big deal. And people that you interact with, it's all genuine. You're not going out of your way. You're not doing anything different, but it's affecting people in a positive way. I think what you see is people going out of their way to affect people in a positive way. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, what you're doing and you're pursuing your dream, you're still young, um, it's a positive thing, and without any effort on your part, you're putting out positive, which is way harder than for somebody that maybe isn't ha- on the same path but has a bigger reach, like a bigger star or something. Maybe does some shady stuff behind doors and you know, or, or shady stuff to a few people, but has a charity for orphan cats. You know, like there's what I see you doing is very genuine to you. And you're affecting many, many people positive without any effort. And I think that's – you need to understand that about yourself. I see what you're saying is you think like you're not making that effort to do so- things for other people because you're feeling selfish. But you don't have to make a big effort because it's coming naturally. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good way to put it. So – Keep your head up, kid. Don't get all down on yourself. <laughs> yeah, so so I'd, I'd like to, to cut in real quick, too. And I think, you know, um, when, when you have big ideas and you have big dreams and things like that, it's kind of natural for those type of people to to think, you know, like broader, always think that they could do more. And I, I don't necessarily think that that is a bad thing. And just the fact that you realize that, you could do more or that there's possibilities that you could do more. Just, it makes you not an asshole. You know what I mean? Like at least you're realizing it. Cause I feel like a lot of the people that are assholes, like that's not even, they're not even conscious of something like that. Yeah, definitely. So now that we've made Cleo feel like the best guy on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks guys. <laughs> We're just looking out for you, buddy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I appreciate it. No, that it, like, uh, like all bullshit aside though, like just being able to hear that from you guys, like it definitely, it helps me with just like my own shit. Cause there are times where I'm just like, man, like what the hell am I really doing to like deserve this? Like, what have I really done for anyone? And I can't really think about something that like I've really done for someone like on a major scale, you know what I mean? Yeah. To no, really, I understand to that, really yeah. receive like the amount of positivity that I receive on a daily basis. And just, so like, I don't, I don't push it away or I don't like sabotage it, but I do like, I do question a lot. Like, damn, like, like, what is it? And you know, like, I think for me, my biggest thing is let's say like social media for one, 
I like to, I like to see myself happy. Right. Yeah. And I like, like if someone's filming something or if I'm doing something or like a photo is being taken, it's like, I like to see that and look at it and be like, and see like the genuine happiness within myself. And then I share it, but I'm not like really going out of my way to like make someone else happy or like, let me like, let me like intentionally try to like inspire someone or something like that, you know? And I think sometimes like, it's really like, it can be a struggle when I'm like, when I'm alone, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like you have all this positivity coming at you, but like, like, what are you really doing to give back? Well, when you think that, just give me a call (laughs) (laughs) because honestly, what you're doing is so it's, uh, it's genuine and out of the box. You know, obviously, uh, I see when you post stuff on Instagram, and I follow a lot of fighters. And guess what, Khalil? You don't post fighter stuff all the time. <laughs> so, like, most people that looked at your Instagram would be like, what, who, what the fuck does this guy do? You know? No, like, really. Like, honestly, <laughs> like, someone, someone the other day was like, they told their friend. I was with, I was with some people, and my friend told their friend like oh yeah like he's a ufc fighter and they're like oh cool like i'm gonna follow you on instagram so they like pull up their phone and i tell them like i i I tell them my instagram and they're looking at it right next to me and i'm like damn like (laughs) i have no like i have barely any ufc like videos or photos so they're scrolling forever just to find like a fight video on my profile and i'm like wow I'm fucking up. Like, <laughs> I'm fucking yeah, like up. is the UFC a pan drum band or something? <laughs> I was like, damn, like, damn, like, I'm a, I'm a self-proclaimed like UFC fighter, and like here, like they can't find fucking anything UFC on my profile. It's like, here I am at the ghost tower, and here I am eating <laughs> yeah. food, and here I am playing a drum, and here I am painting, or like whatever it may be. Yep. And I'm like, damn, like damn but now but <laughs> who look am at, i look at the other side of that right so look at the other side you're a ufc fighter you should be at least a top 10 fighter if we went by non-instagram ratings um like so there's a guy i don't even know what the fuck a pan drum is until you posted that like <laughs> i had no clue and i'm like oh cool you know khalil's a little weird he does all this other cool stuff you know that's <laughs> that's what we should all be doing but there's there's somebody else out there that I don't care who it was, a 50-year-old man or a woman or whatever it is. They saw him like – somehow they saw you, and then they seen you tag this thing. And they're like, wow, this young, you know, successful fighter, isn't it the same thing I'm in? Or <laughs> your music tastes. Man, your music tastes are all over the place. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, like, when somebody looks at that and they can, they can, you know, see that a person on a whole other level, whether – like I've said it to you before, mm-hmm. whether it's some kid that's not accepted at school or something like that, and they see a picture of you you know, doing a drawing, and they connect with you on a different level, and it's all positive. You know, It's not just the grunt and grind of training and fighting. It's like there's a whole other level behind Khalil, and it may take – 40 Instagram posts to see when his last UFC fight was. So it's, it, it's a good thing. And I think that it, the way you're doing it, like you're not thinking about it. There's no guy behind you programming you of how to be a successful person. And that's, what's cool. And you're still becoming a successful person without that by being genuine. Yeah. And you know what, man, like the, like it's crazy because the people that I really want to connect with and that I love connecting with the most on like instagram or whatever social media people that reach out are like kind of the ones that connect that i connect with on that kind of like outcast like yeah i'm not really like the star athlete or i'm not this crazy successful anything it's just like hey man like i just sit at home and just like fucking twiddle my thumbs like those are the people that i'm like ah cool like let's talk like let's hang out you know because it's like at the end of the day, like I've literally only been doing this less than 10 years now. Yeah. So like, I've been the same dude before this 20 years, like my entire life. Yeah. And for like the past nine years, like now I'm just this like UFC guy. And there's a time in my life where I kind of got like caught up and lost and like, okay, now I'm the UFC fighter. Like I'm not that, that person that I used to be. 
And, like, that's where I kind of got, like, lost and fucked up. And, like, I'm like, you know what? No, like, I'm both. And I'm more the other person than I am the UFC guy. You know? And, like, once I accepted that is where, like, I really started to, like, feel more happy. I mean. Because I'm like, hey, here I am. I'm still the same 300 and something pound guy who just plays music and likes to eat shitty food and all these things, but I have a responsibility and like a bigger calling now to also do something else. It's not one or the other, it's both. And like, and it's not even necessarily like, oh, I have to balance both equally. It's like, no, you know what? Like I'm still that guy. And now I have something that like, that when it's time for me to step out of being that other guy, I can step into being this UFC fighter. And like, I know that if they call me tomorrow and they're like, okay, you got to fight. Like, okay, cool. Then like my music and stuff, like I can set to the side for a second and I can fully focus on being, you know, being a badass fighter. And then once that's over, then I'm like, ah, okay. Now I'm back to just being the 300 pound guy eating donuts on the couch <laughs> at this moment. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, like I don't have to like overdo anything. And it's, it's like, it's really refreshing. I mean, you and I had been, friends for a long time now since we met way back but once you came over to thailand i was like oh cool um i i don't talk about it but i mean i've talked to kurt about it he's been over here alone being in another country alone that you don't speak the language and you're not in a place like phuket where there's a lot of people that speak english it gets lonely so i was like here doing my own thing and it was getting depressing and i've had a few people that have come over and then when you were like here i'm like oh cool we'll meet up and then when we met up I mean, we were friends, but once we started talking and hanging out, and then we met down in Phuket, I mean, we spent a whole cab ride talking about hardcore bands. Yeah, for now, real. Now, like, literally. <laughs> and then, like, I'm not going to say or not say that any graffiti might have been done in the presence of us, <laughs> but, you know, we connected on different things that have nothing to do with how we met. Nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, music, art, uh, things like that, that they're bringing people to you. We may have met through one fight team, which is an amazing place that uh, I've met all, you know, so many of my friends that I have today, because I think you can keep friends. If you beat the shit out of your friends, they'll be your friends for a long time and they beat the shit out of you. You know, it's kind of it's a different bond, but you know, <laughs> we became a lot closer on stuff that had nothing to do with how we met and had nothing to do with how you have to try and represent yourself being a UFC fighter. And that's why, like, people come up to you and they're like, oh, clearly the UFC fighter. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'll take the picture. You know, make sure that that person is happy with the image that they think of you. And then you're always – you've always been so cool to everybody. Even the uh, – what was it? The Turkish people at the market in Phuket that you got a Yeah, <laughs> they just rolled up on me like, yo, you're cool. You fuck on Kentucky. We're from Turkey. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there was a bunch of them. So... <laughs> Oh, you don't know about the stories about that, Kurt? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. So, Khalil, how did the people in Turkey take you when you had to fight Gokansaki? Oh, man, like, I told this story tonight. There was just, like, I got, like, hate mail. My family got hate mail. Oh, wow. Like, you're going to die. Like, my sister getting messages like, oh, like, you probably fuck your brother. Like, just dumb shit, man. And, like, it was just, like, it was just so bad and, like, so negative. And I was like... I like I have to I got to do something about this <laughs> like I got to put this I got to put this to rest you know like I had so much motivation for that fight because like I just felt like I took that one really personally even though like like he didn't necessarily do too many things personally to me it's just like the fact of like the energy that his fans brought me I was like yeah like I if if I lose this fight like I won't be able to fucking live and so I have on video, like, there was, like, four or five of the guys from Turkey that came up to us in a market in Phuket, in a night market. And they didn't really say, oh, Khalil, oh, you're the fight. They were kind of like, Khalil Roundtree. <laughs> you yeah, they were like, oh, Khalil Roundtree, you fight Gokansaki. We're from Turkey. <laughs> and then they just, like, looked at me, and I was like, uh, okay, yeah, Khalil, ready yeah. to go <laughs> Khalil kind of just stopped, and I'm like, he had already told me the story, so I'm like, oh, shit. Like, in a, we're all going to jail in Bangkok somewhere, you know? Yeah, like, we're about to throw down in a market right now. So that was <laughs> one of the more interesting uh, deals. Let me, uh, let me see here real quick. I got some non-topical questions for you. So 
So I got three questions, all right? Okay. Just Khalil questions. What's your favorite movie of all time? Ooh. Like one movie that's like got to be your go-to. Damn, man. Why would you <laughs> say that? <laughs> I know. You're, you're way too deep for one movie. But if you were like one movie that you were like, you know, I got to flip this on, whether it reminds you of something or it just, you know, motivating or whatever it is, one movie. Lion King. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Didn't see that. Nope, didn't see that coming, but all right, it's all good. Uh, I like Toy Story too, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> all right, one cheat food. What's your go-to cheat food? Salad. What the fuck? <laughs> because, dude, you know how I eat, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I eat pizza and burgers and every the French fries daily. There's no such thing as a cheat meal. So if I eat <laughs> salad, you better believe it's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. <laughs> that's it was funny as like uh you had gotten the notice you know we were in phuket you you went down there because you had the fight and we went over uh to one of the cities and i was like you're like what do you want to eat and i'm like i was, i felt bad because i knew there was a good pizza place and i didn't want to put khalil on like bad food you know i'm like oh i know how it is when people have to cut weight and he's like don't worry about it we'll go eat pizza I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, this is, I like hanging around with these fighters, not the little guys. <laughs> the, pe- the peak of fight camp. I'm like, let's go get pizza. Yeah. And it, it, we were sitting at a, a barbecue place and he, we walked in one day and this kid was eating a, this platter. I mean, literally, this, this food comes on a baking sheet. Yeah. You would bake Christmas cookies on. Full, and it's full. It's literally a mountain of meat, ribs, it is- chicken, <laughs> beef patties. <laughs> Pita bread. Rice. We walk in. Lil goes, I want to get that. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and he's like, oh, maybe another night. And he didn't get it. And then one night we sat down. I'm like, what would you get? And he's like, the platter. I'm like, this is like three <laughs> weeks out from the fight. And it's like, it looked like 10 pounds of food. <laughs> Easily 10 pounds of food. And I smashed it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And what, last one. This is a little more on the fighting side. But what is your favorite training partner that you've had? And you've trained all over the world with amazing people. Like one guy. That you would be like, if I could just train with that guy, not not to prepare for a camp or anything, but just one favorite training partner. Anderson Silva. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, I that's a pretty good training partner. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, to go along with that, like, because I kind of figured you'd say that because I know your relationship with him. But <laughs> when Anderson put out publicly that Khalil Roundtree was going to be UFC champion, what, how did like how did that make you feel? Like, obviously amazing, but like what? I mean, you're you're a kid that just trained, you know, with right off the couch into the gym, and then you have, like we've all said, probably one of the greatest of all time. Say, this kid is going to be it. It was a dream come true because, like, he's always been my favorite fighter, even before I knew him. And I remember there was a time, like, in my like this was years ago when I was like engaged and things like. I told my I told my ex fiance at the time like, yo, like I'm gonna meet this guy one day whether it's like me training with him or fighting like fighting him like I'm gonna meet him, and like I feel some type of like connection to him and I ended up like training with him one day at Black House he just showed up randomly we sparred he's like hey I like your energy like can you help me get ready for Nick Diaz and I was like yeah of course and he like took me in. And that's around the time where he, like, came out with that statement publicly. And so, like, the fact that he said that, like, anybody else could have said that, but he said it. And just how I've always dreamt about, like, being friends with him or knowing him or whatever, for him to say that, like, that, like, that really, it just gave me this sense of, like, encouragement and motivation to just continue to, like, do what I'm doing and, like, be myself, you know, like, not even not even change anything or like up my training or take it to the next level. I'm just like, man, like whatever I've been doing got me this far to where he said this. So I'm just going to continue to be like on my own path, you know? And And yeah, so yeah, it was like a dream come true. Like I see, uh, we've talked about it personally, but I mean, I've seen um, your training and how you train and you train basically how you live your life. You train as hard as you can. You train, when you feel your body's right, you're not one of the guys that's been put in a gym that's like, we're doing two a days every day, even if you're not in camp, to stay ready to fight. Like, yeah. I, you know, like, but I mean, you're doing it like 
how you described to me how Anderson does it. Yeah. You know, uh, and I believe, like, from what you've told me, he had a lot of influence on, you know, instilling kind of training methods and things like that into you. Yeah, it's like kind of one of the things that um, that I take away from that is like, man, we like it's fighting, right? And like, even if it's training, like we're still getting beat up and it hurts. And like, uh, people think like just because it hurts or you if you go home feeling like shit, then you had like a really good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a good, good car accident. <laughs> now like I got in a car wreck and now I got to get better. So tomorrow I'm going to do it all over again. <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to drive that, even faster. <laughs> because that's the grind and that's what it takes to be a great fighter. Is you got to feel like shit every day. I'm like, no, no thanks. Like I'd rather feel like shit a few times a month <laughs> yeah. and like train smart and actually work my mind and make sure that like, no matter what I'm doing in my life, that I'm still happy. And you know what I mean? Like I'm always going to push myself and like, and make sure that I'm not like half assing it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I need to feel like shit every day. You get me? Oh yeah. That's, that's like, right. that's like, okay, I want to, be a you know a street racer and like but every day you're driving your car to the bones you know what i mean like no more gas left in the tank and then you expect your car to perform and and race the next day you know yeah it's a smarter aspect and i mean you, you see a lot of people going away from the grind of like a wrestling camp like they you know how how fighters used to train now using like the performance institute and trying to train smarter but you're doing it on your own mental level. Like when you're good, you're good, and you yeah, go. Yeah, like mental, mental and physical. And you know what the crazy thing is? Is like it's such a, like it's it's just in the culture of MMA, and I think it's because of wrestling. Because obviously, like wrestlers, like they're all about just grinding and like mental toughness and all this stuff, which is which is good. Like I believe that will and mental toughness and like and all those things, you know, like they can take you a really long way. And like, and using your mind to take your body to the next level is like, is absolutely important, but like there's, there's a limit to it. And for me, like, I know my limit and really like, we're only fighting for 15 minutes. So I really shouldn't be beating myself up six hours a day just for 15 minutes. Yeah. You get me? So if I'm, if I'm running and my legs are burning, cool. If I'm, you know, if I'm lifting weights and getting stronger, cool. If I'm sparring, cool. But, like, it doesn't need to be excessive. And I think that, I think, personally, that, like, a lot of that grind and beating ourselves up and stuff like that, it comes from fear, right? Like, we, like, we're so afraid to, like, lose or to do anything wrong that we're willing to, like, beat ourselves up before the actual beating up even happens well because we feel like we feel like we're going to put ourselves through the worst thing and then so anything that happens in the fight you hear it all the time anything that happens in the fight can't be as bad as what you've already gone through yeah so like kind of the way that i put it is like okay if i'm going to go train say i go train one day and i completely beat myself up like shit and then the next day is like the day where i have to spar and like be at my best like taking that over to the fight, like, dude, if I go fight, like, I want to feel good. Yeah. So I want to, like, I want to have a sparring session just like how I want to fight. Like, I want to feel good. So I have to be doing things that really, like, that I'm pushing myself, but, like, the next day, like, my body feels good. I think that people get it mistaken where they're like, oh, like, I had a good workout because I feel like shit today. It's like, eh, maybe you're probably doing something wrong. Like, soreness is okay. But if you feel like shit and you can't get out of bed and, like, all this stuff, like, that's probably not the best thing. <laughs> yeah, you might have heard something. <laughs> you might have done – your that's your body, like, really, like, <laughs> telling you, like, hey, man, you need to slow it down a little bit. Like, I yeah. know you're mentally strong, but give me a little bit of <laughs> – give me a little bit of a break. So yeah. I think that, like, for me, like, I I try to avoid – all of that stuff as much as possible because I don't want to be crippled when I'm 40. Yeah. I don't want to be brain dead when I'm 40. 
and like fighting is not everything in life you get me like oh yeah yeah yeah, and that's one thing too where like being here i realized like man like like in the states we're so focused on winning and losing and all these things where it's like we're willing to do anything to not lose yeah and it's like it's really like we're willing to do anything to not lose rather than like willing to do anything to like enjoy when we go fight oh yeah definitely like the enjoyment now and especially like in ufc the enjoyment comes when the fight is won right when you when you you get that check you feel like shit you know what i mean and it's like fuck like i felt like shit blah 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 and i didn't do this right and i didn't stick to the game plan and like all this stuff and it's like well where where does any of that tie into man i felt great (laughs) yeah like well it's got to be a huge mental like if ah, man i couldn't even imagine on that scale but like you're losing a fight and i'm I'm sure as you're losing a fight like in a in a cage that it's not going to go through your head but once it's over it's got to be overwhelming of the social media repercussions, the media repercussions, the family, did they think you you know, didn't do enough? Your team is disappointed. There's going to be so much if you lost a fight. Whereas in Thailand, if you lose a fight, you still get to go drink whiskey afterwards with your, your team. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> uh, no one likes to lose. You know what I mean? Like, no one likes to lose. But, like, but it's, just, it's just different. Like, if you lose a fight, you're not getting all this crazy, like, media blowback and all that stuff you know or like like the social media world like oh you suck or get back to the drawing board you fucking idiot (laughs) yeah you know like it's not everybody all those experts that come out and they say you know it's like it's like wrestling sucks (laughs) yeah like oh you'll never be a champion you'll never (laughs) blah 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 and like I had a fan be like, yo, dude, like, I can't wait to see you fight John Jones. And someone responded like, oh, what, you want to see him get knocked out again? And I'm like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's one person that's like, that would like to see, like, that would like to see, in my opinion, like, a good fight. Like, I think that'd be a really cool fight. Win or lose, it'd be a cool fucking fight. Yeah. And, I... and, but there's people like, oh, well, you fucking suck, or blah, 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 blah. It's like, ugh. So, did you ever find out who made that account that called out John Jones? No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get into it, but I saw that one night and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. Kurt, do you have any edumacated questions? Because I have a few more that aren't. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of the things that I was going to say is I, just talking about like all the art and music that you do. Um, I think I think it's really important because I think like a lot of like what fighters a lot of up and coming fighters don't understand is that you don't have to be obsessed with fighting all the time. You know what I mean? Like people become so obsessed and then they they get in their head and then they start to overthink things. They start to to stress themselves out. So I I, I think it's really cool that you know you have these different outlets that take your mind off of fighting. Because I think if you look at any of the great fighters, they all have something that they do. You know, like if it's paintball, if it's chess, or whatever it is, um, I think it's really important to have, like, some sort of outlet. Yeah, dude, totally. Because, like, there's one thing. It's like, dude, it's fighting, right? It's fighting. And, like, yeah, we all have that in us, like, instinctually to fight and stuff. But, like, it's not the whole world (laughs) like you gotta have something on the outside like that's one thing too that i learned from anderson man like the day he fought nick diaz we were literally at cheesecake factory (laughs) while the fight was happening like like (laughs) like the ufc main like the the we showed up the second fight of the main card which means that there were only three more two more fights and then his (laughs) <laughs> and like I'm sitting at the dinner table panicking and I'm like Anderson there the UFC's calling him and I'm like Anderson like we got to go bro and he's like bro he's like <laughs> he's like bro I know show up they have no fights like, <laughs> they got away from me and like but he's sitting here like enjoying his life with his people before he goes to fight on like a big stage and like during camp like 
after training every day we would have some type of event that we went to go do to release from the hard day of training that we had whether it's paintballing whether it's jet skiing whether it's going to the movies or just hanging out at home playing video games like there was all always something to just like release from the hard day of training because we're pushing ourselves mentally physically you know we're fighting we're doing all these things and then like obviously there's going to be hard times and and all of these things so there's got to be something to where it just brings you back to like normality where you're like ah <laughs> life like i yeah. can do things that i enjoy and so yeah it's it's really important seems like a good balance yeah all right all right khalil i know you only got a few more minutes um real simple questions don't go into too much detail okay what does your wand fight team tattoo mean to you a lot of us have it I just want to know personally what it, what uh what that means to you. Ooh, um, you know what? Like for me, it's like it's where everything changed for me. You know, like yep. one fight team is where I really learned how to fight, and not even just like physically, but in so many different areas. I grew up as a guy who wasn't, you know, confrontational at all, and and I got bullied in school and. Even in high school, I remember the day some kid punched me in the face and I did nothing about it. Yeah. And like, you know, like I just didn't know I didn't have that like fight in me. But in that place, like <laughs> there was no there was no way out. But oh, yeah. <laughs> like when I when I see it, when I look at it, it's just like I I know how far I can go in in just the fight of life. Yeah. I believe Kurt would have one too, but he doesn't have any tattoos and he's scared. So, um, fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll, get I'll get a sock out one day. <laughs> um, like you were saying, actually, I had the same. I got bullied in high school. You know, I got. I was telling Kurt I was on a school bus. I played lacrosse for one year because I thought, you know, I wanted to try a sport. And I was on the bus and I was listening to my Walkman, listening to "Ride the Lightning" by Metallica, and the jocks. When I remember one looking over the seat and going, "What are you listening to?" And he took my Walkman. And pulled the tape out. He's like, fucking Metallica, whatever headbanger guy. And he like ripped the tape up and threw it out the bus window. Oh, and I, oh. and I, I couldn't, I was like, I wasn't confrontation. I was a skater kid and I was like the only one of me on the bus. And that like really has always stuck with me. And, and this, you know, that was like one of the things. So, all right, one more, uh, oh, a couple more, but real quick. Do you agree that money cannot buy happiness? Um, I disagree. So money can buy you happiness. Yes. And real quick, how does that work? Okay. So it really like, it all comes down to for one, what makes you happy. Right. And so I'd say like, I'm speaking personally, can money buy me happiness? Yes, absolutely. Because I know the things that I can do with money that would be able to bring the happiness, like for the things that I that make me happy. Like exactly. Things, okay. Like if I were able to buy every, like my mom, my brother, my sister, my nieces, a plane ticket to Thailand to come be with me here, absolutely. Yeah. That would make me happy. Now, if I had all of the money in the world with like with no idea of what made me happy, then no, absolutely okay. not. It could be like lonely and miserable, but like, I know like traveling makes me happy and you know what I mean? Being yep. able to provide experiences for myself and others, like that makes me happy. So yeah, a hundred percent. It could so definitely money affords us the abilities to do things that make us happy. Yeah, for sure. It's exactly. just like okay. the way that, the way that I look at money is just like, it's like, it's almost like freedom. Right. Yeah. Because yep. everything in life costs money. And so like so having a big mansion or a big car and all this stuff like nah, if that makes you happy, cool. Then, yeah, it could buy you happiness. But like those things are going to get old, you know. Yeah. Yep. But if I it's agree. like experiences like like I want to go skydiving. Well, that takes money. Cool. Yeah. Right. You're buying the ticket. It's just a <laughs> means to get the to the other things. But, yeah, I agree totally. Yeah. All right. Sure. Khalil, this is really important. All right, you ready? Yeah. Simple. Do aliens exist? Absolutely. 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to Absolutely, know, you know, man. I had to Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. I definitely think aliens exist. All right. And we're going to have to do like a part two podcast where we talk about how like aliens exist and <laughs> like flat earth. <laughs> and, like NASA conspiracies and all that stuff. We're gonna have oh, to that's take right. to, like the Joe Rogan fucking. Oh, R2. but I totally forgot about that night that I came over to your room. We were watching that flat Earth thing, like yeah. that, that on Netflix. It's so interesting. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I'm a hundred percent flat Earther, but I'm, I'm gonna be like, yo, let's look at this because there's a possibility that the Earth could be flat. I love the interesting other people's aspects, you know, other people's point of view. I just love that other question. Because if I, you buy into everything, man, I could, I, all it takes is somebody that's in power to sell you that idea and then no one else tells you anything different. Just like you were just saying with the fighters, if the UFC sells you that, you know, that Bob Ross is the next UFC champion and tells everybody and people are learning that, then that's who the next UFC champion is. You here's, know, it, here's the thing that I, here's the thing that I like that. I, it, let's talk about just like flat earth for like two seconds. So, <laughs> here's, here's oh, wait a minute. Uh, Eddie Bravo's message of me. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's how I look at it, man. Like if we were taught that the earth is flat in school, would we believe that the earth is flat? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And then like, what would, what would line it up? Okay. As soon as you take your first trip as a kid or a teenager, you would look out the plane window and see a flat surface. So then you'd be like, Oh, for sure. Like it would, it would, you wouldn't even think twice, but yeah. the fact that we were taught that it's a globe, but then we go in a plane and we see that it's flat. We're like, Oh, it's just because of blah, 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 blah. So it's really all just like programming. You oh, get of course. me like, it's yeah, really yeah. programming and there's so much like there's so much stuff behind it that like that proves that it's round because of whatever reason it was made up for it. To well, be, it's like, all going to be what we're taught and then we're going to fight for the home team per, per se. Like we're yeah. going to, you know, if, if we learn that the color red is red, yo, you can't tell me that's not red, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, like that I was taught that. So, you know, like you're saying, is if we were told it was one thing when, once we were, you know, from being young, we're always going to be on that home team, you know, and anybody that says anything different, we're like, yo, you're retarded. There's no, like, that's stupid. Any, <laughs> you know? Anybody, anybody who knows, like, anybody who has a little bit more knowledge than us or, like, so say fucking Muay Thai, for instance, right? And you got a person who knows nothing about Muay Thai. But then they go to a trainer who they're like, oh, this guy's like has this many fights or whatever. And they teach you a technique and you're going to be like, OK, cool. This is the proper technique. I think it's the same thing with anything that we learned in like the schooling system. Like when we are young and people are teaching us things that they are knowledgeable about, we're going to be like, oh, we're not going to question it because they know more than I know. Yeah, exactly. right. Especially but when like, you're developing. Yeah. But if if it were like to if if we were taught from beginning like hey you know what everything in the world is questionable and figure it out for yourself then we'd have so many different like opinions and outlooks and all that stuff which i think is the real way yeah to, that's like, a little chaos because like, then you tell me i gotta work 40 hours a week for 200 dollars, and i'm gonna go screw you your two your your two hundred dollars doesn't mean anything. I'll go make some money that does. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. But no, it's definitely programming from a young age. Anyways, that was Yep, aliens exist. We'll have to do this again because Yeah, we gotta do we gotta do part two. <laughs> I would love to just do a conspiracy one and see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, so I know you gotta go Khalil. Khalil Roundtree, what is what is Khalil Roundtree? What is your message when you when you're gone? What do you want people to get from you being here or anything? I mean, do you just want to be a part of the deal, or is there something that you would like people to to go? Oh, well, that was Khalil. He did this. Um, I would say like, man, just open your mind, think, and live outside of the box. Um. Uh, like, don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, live, speak, and experience your own truth. And take it to your grave. <laughs> it's good stuff, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah. It's like, really, like, I think that a, a, a really big thing that 
I had to learn and that I would really like love to inspire people with is like, man, like there's only one us, right? Like there's only one of us and each of us are so unique in our own ways. Um, and I think that we all have like crazy cool perspectives and outlooks. Like the way that I see the world is not the way that you see the world, which like, it's not like, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. And I think that everyone is so special in the way that they see it authentically and not like trying to fit into the box of like acceptance and all of these other things. So I would love to hear more about people who are like free thinkers and like, you know, the Albert Einstein's and Steve Jobs, like people who really think out of the box. Yeah. And I would love to really like continue to expand that for myself. So like if I were to have like, a dying message like that would definitely be included. You know what I mean? Cause I think that that's, what's going to change the world is just people who are really coming out and speaking their own truth and yeah. like taking it to their grave. I agree. Uh, one of the things that like I'm trying to do just with, you know, fight chases, people are like, Oh, do you recommend this or this? I'm like, no, I just want you to just take that one step. Like I love Thailand, just get here and I'll give you like a, a very vacant blueprint. But just come here and experience stuff. You know, get off the couch and live your life. That's that's the biggest thing, man. So on that note, Khalil, uh, any social media shout out, any stuff that you got going on that you wanna you wanna get out there? Um yeah, follow me on Instagram because that's where I'm most active. And I got some I got this cool program coming up where like people can um follow me get like weight loss things kind of just like whatever has gotten me to where I'm at um I'm gonna spend time dedicating uh dedicating my time to helping people into like my perspective and what's gotten me off the couch and into the world so that's in the works I got a whole team helping me with this whole thing and my brand is dropping really soon with merchandise and I'm writing a comic book and all of these new things. So stay tuned. Yeah, we will definitely have have to have you back. Uh, it's been awesome to uh, get into these weird little things with you and, and your outlook on things. But it's been, you know, great to get you to sit down and talk with us for a while. My pillai, no problem. Cop <laughs> 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 but we'll get you on here again Khalil I appreciate it and uh, you have a good night you too talk to you guys soon fight right. chasing the building <laughs> Khalil Roundtree right. good talking to you dude alright talk to you guys soon alright buddy talk to you later alright All right, guys thanks for listening uh, we have been brought to you today by Siam Boxing Siam Boxing on Instagram follow him if you guys are looking for like training videos, all the stuff that's going on in Thailand, Siam Boxing, and he's also putting a little more effort into his YouTube channel, so that's going to be growing with a bunch of training clips of all the famous fighters over here, fighters from all over the world doing Muay Thai, so check them out. Check us out if you want to support. Come on, give us a little support. 99 cents a month will go a long way right now. Our Anchor FM backslash Fight Chase is our homepage for, uh, for the podcast, you can go there, and if you go there directly, you'll be able to see the other services that are available to listen to the podcast, whether it's Spotify or Google. Um, it will be coming out on Apple very soon, and you can actually support us right there. There's a link. So if you could do that, we'd much appreciate it. Also, we've been adding all of our episodes are now on YouTube. So if you want to just click on a YouTube playlist, you can go to Fight Chase on YouTube, and it's the Fight Chase podcast playlist, and you can listen to all the episodes back-to-back. -back. That'd be a long time, but... You'd be a dedicated listener, and we'd appreciate that. So other than that, I'm Kelly from Fight Chase. Kurt? I'm Kurt Brooks from Carson Kickboxing Club. And you can follow us on social media on either one of those, Fight Chase and Carson Kickboxing Club. So thank you again for listening. Thank you to Khalil for joining us today. And we'll be definitely doing the conspiracy theories with Khalil Roundtree. I guarantee you that. And don't say boom. 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 <laughs>